name is Christina Carlo, and I'm with the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine. And I'm here today with Nicole Lighthouse. Hi, everybody. I'm Nicole. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a fourth year medical student at A.T. Still University, Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. And I'm currently serving as the ACOM Osteopathic Health Policy Intern. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. It's a pleasure to talk yeah. with you, Nicole. Thank you. And Nicole, as the OP, or Osteopathic Health Policy Intern with ACOM, yeah. your appointment fell during ACOM's annual Calm Day on Capitol mm -hmm. Hill, yeah. which is our annual advocacy event where we invite osteopathic medical students, deans, and other advocates to Washington, D.C. to meet with their lawmakers to talk about issues of importance to osteopathic medical education. So as someone who is very interested in advocacy and has a strong interest in health policy, mm -hmm. I really wanted to talk to you about your Calm Day experience. Sure. So my first question for you is, what did you advocate for during Calm Day 18? Sure, absolutely. So our team advocated for two major legislation issues. So number one, um, the, direct, the federal direct grad plus lo uh, loan program and the public service loan forgiveness program and our goal was to protect those and advocate for the reauthorization of those issues under the higher education act and so the graduate plus loan program it really aims to cover the remaining cost of education after tuition so for example living expenses or um, traveling to clinical rotation sites or cost of board examination scores. And I know that I personally would not be able to begin my education, let alone continue or finish my education over a four year time period without this um, type of aid from the Grad Plus Loan Program. And the Loan Forgiveness Program is the only program that incentivizes public service. And it is a critical program, um, I know for me, um, from a professional identity perspective, um, I have always wished to serve um, for really vulnerable populations and regions of higher need for patient care issues. So I believe it's my duty to continue advocating for the continuation and sustainability of these programs. That's great. Those are definitely two very important programs to OME and really yeah. to all health profession students mm -hmm. and professionals. Um, so my second question mm -hmm. is, what was your favorite part about the Calm Day experience? Sure, absolutely. So there was a very powerful moment when my team and I worked with a congressional staff member and we were talking about different issues that students face with um, loans in, in medical school. And the staff member said, you know, was able to empathize and identify with exactly what we were going through and said, we absolutely support this and um, we're you know, encouraging its continuation and we are going to continue advocating for this. So I felt like it was our, um, it was a very human moment to connect about this very critical issue affecting students and families across the country. And that's a great story to share that you can make an in-person connection and, you know, share why something is important when you're face-to-face -face at an event like Combag. Yes, exactly. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And my third question is, what's one thing you learned from the experience? Sure. So. One of the most critical things that I learned is that these issues, whether we're discussing cost of health care or anything, or if we're discussing the primary um, workforce shortage issues or um, any other co really complex topic, it's really important to um, address how do we resolve this, um, but considering all of the factors contributing to the issue. So it's not one solution that is going to really address these multifactorial problems. Um, and I think the more important lesson too is to be able to work as a team and to develop like a sustainable collaborative towards these challenging issues. And as a, with a background in family therapy, uh, as a counselor, I felt um, it was very effective to address larger like s systemic issues by like a very small step-by-step -step approach, a manageable approach, so. Those are two really important points, yeah. yeah. One thing, advocacy does take time, so you wanna make sure you're sustaining your efforts during an advocacy event like Calm Day, but then beyond, mm -hmm. because you wanna make sure you're consistently using your voice in support of these programs. Yes. And also, I like your point about having a team effort, because the more people you have raising their voices, the stronger your message will be, and also different people can share different perspectives about why the systemic issue is really important and why mm -hmm. you need a lot of people to help solve it. Yeah. So those are great lessons learned. Yes. 
Uh, my next question is, what strategies did you find most effective when communicating with your members of Congress or with congressional staff? Sure. So, because I want to dedicate my career to public service, to um, really vulnerable populations, and caring for different communities, um, I really translated through illustrating my experiences as a family therapist and as a counselor and as a medical student, just different patient inequities that I've seen through clinical rotations and um, really access to care issues and um, different barriers to care that you see in communities. And I really believe that anybody can really identify with those issues, whether it's personal or whether it's your family member that's gone through it. I feel like that's another more um, uh, way, it's another way that we can connect together like through advocacy, so. And that's a really good point again because making, mm -hmm. making an issue personal to you is very important but then also making that connection to someone else so they see why it's important to them is right. another really important step. Yeah. And my final question sure. is let's say you're talking to someone who wants to come to Calm Day next year, mm -hmm. what is some advice that you would share with that advocate? Sure, absolutely. So first and foremost, enjoy yourself. It is a very, um, it is um, a very rare experience as a medical student, um, especially in our busy lives, to be able to participate in this. And um, it was really an honor to be able to do. And um, I think it's been one of the most enjoyable experiences that I've had in my um, professional career as a medical student. And. Um, no matter if this is your really first time as an advocate or um, if this is your, or if you're a seasoned advocate, um, Ed to Med through ACOM is always here to help you with that step. So, and in addition, um, your really remain aware of the individual that you're talking to, whether it be a congressional staff member, um, your legislature, they are sensitive to the issues that you're advocating for. They're very aware, and they do encourage, um, you know, the discussion of these issues. But just remain mindful that these are very challenging topics: cost, healthcare, and they're very personal issues. And so, being able to sh again share your narrative, going back to our original discussion, and I feel like that's a really um, healthy way to open the door to discussing these more challenging topics. So. Um, thank you for your, your work and your advocacy towards these issues, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next Calm Day. So. Thank you so much, Nicole. It's been a pleasure talking with you, and you. I urge everyone watching, if you're interested in advocacy, if you're inspired by Nicole's story, definitely check out ed to med We try to make advocacy as exciting and as easy as possible. <laughs> We're online at ed 2 and you can also connect, also connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you. Thank you.